All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, whichever platform that you guys are tuning in us from, uh, whether you're on our Facebook, LinkedIn, or LinkedIn, Facebook, your YouTube, <laughs> okay, or YouTube, or eventually, you know, uh, this sound bites will also be available on Spotify or Google Podcast as well. Um, so whichever channels that you guys are tuning in from, you all are tuning in from. If I may request, if you don't mind, can you just type out whether it's YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook, so that we roughly know. Because I realize, as usual, I can't see whoever that's watching in, watching us from YouTube. I mean, from uh, LinkedIn on my whatever platform that I'm watch, uh, doing my live from. Um, but once again, thank you so much for tuning in for another series of What Do You Do? My name is Shukri Azman, or for short, short it's Shuk. All right, I'm a uh, learning and development uh, practitioner. I'm a people developer. Uh, I'm also a... Uh, I would say I'm a, I want to say content curator, lah, but that's like a very typical term nowadays. People like to be say, oh, I'm a content creator. But no, lah, no. Lah. All right, I, I just love having conversation with people, but I thought maybe it would be nice to bring this conversation to life. Depends, life as in L-I-V-E or L-I-F-E, depends on which perspective that you're looking at. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really to bring this conversation for more people to hear it because really, I think these are the conversation that happens behind uh, you know, in networking event or on through WhatsApp. But the thing is that there's a lot of information or wealth of information that I thought more people can actually benefit out of this conversation. And uh, for those of you, it's your first time tuning into what do you do or listening into what do you do? What do you do basically is a live series or conversational series where we talk about the profession. We are not going to be talking about what's their subject matter expert. We are talking about their profession, about what do they do? Because why? Some of you out there might be thinking, how do I become a lecturer? Or how do I become an educator? How do I become a coach? Or how do I become a, a branding coach? How do I become, a, for example, uh, I might be having someone, a podcaster, for example. All this will be happening in what do you do? It's basically to be the inspiration channel for you to think about, hey, I want to be like someone, but I do not know what they do. I do not know how, what's the pathway. How do I do I get there? And this is exactly the avenue for it, all right? Um, so... It's early morning on a Saturday morning. Uh, I hope you guys are tuning in, uh, whether having your coffee, breakfast or whatever not. Please, even if you're in your bed, just on your phone, feel free. Just make sure your phone is steady. Uh. I scared you watching, 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 right? And then the phone flat, uh, fell flat on your face. Uh, and then you have a good morning wake up after that. Okay, so just uh, have a good uh, space for you to actually tune in. All right, uh, because today I'm going to have a very special guest. Again, if yesterday I fly you from Singapore to Penang, I'm going to be flying you from Singapore to another part of Malaysia for today. All right. Uh, because I cannot fly into Malaysia, so I'll be flying myself into Malaysia. Uh, I will let her introduce more about herself later on. Uh, she's, um, as you can see from my footer at the screen, right? She's a lecturer, public speaker, and presentation skills coach. All right. Um, she's also someone that prepare people for to get out to be industrial ready. All right, it's beyond just about, hey, I got a qualification, I got a degree in something. But it's how do you actually make use of your degree to actually materialize your degree to be someone that's valuable in organization as well. And that's what exactly this person is doing. And I think this is a very amped topic, a very timely topic to talk about because this person's role is very, very critical in our job market nowadays because I'm sure you might have encountered, right? People coming to your job or coming to your office, hey, I got a degree, you know, but the thing is that this person is never ready to do certain things, you know? So, um... This is exactly uh, what she does. But I will let her explain more about what she does, all right, in a bit. All right, so um, whether you are tuning in from um, whichever channel, I welcome you once again to another series of What Do You Do? All right, um, the only reason why I'm repeating myself because I'm buying time so that people can click share. Please uh, help me just click share so that more people can actually tune in. <laughs> all right, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, just help me to click share so that more people can actually benefit out of this conversation as well. All right. So without further ado, it's not about um, it's not about me as always. All right. Uh, the thing about trainer is that we can talk for hours, but it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about my guest for today. So let me bring to you Shazwin, an educator, a coach, and I'll let her explain what, more about what she does. All right. So let me bring in Shazwin. Hello, Good morning Shazwin. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I love your energy. You know, I'm so e excited <laughs> whenever the people I have a conversation with, right? The energy is so pumped up. And it's on a weekend morning, you know. Thank you, thank you. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Definitely good. Definitely good. How's everything in wherever that you are at? Lah? Maybe uh, for the benefit for our friends, uh, before we go to the topic about what do you do, maybe you want to introduce yourself, which part of the globe that you are in. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> let's go. 
Okay, hi, I'm Shazin Sazali. So I am from Malaysia, yeah, in Selangor. Okay, so I uh, grew up in Subang Jaya. So it's Selangor, Subang Jaya. Yes, so I'm flying you in right? here today. Nice. Yes. Nice, nice. All the way from... <laughs> Yes, so we are flying all the way to Selangor, Subang Jaya. <laughs> if you have no idea where Selangor, Subang Jaya, you can just Google. Right? See, there's a lot of happenings right there. All right, okay. <laughs> so, Shazin, uh, as the topic, just getting straight to the topic itself, this live session, this conversational live session, the conversation is about what do you do as you are very much aware. What do you do is always that topic that people talk about during a networking session, right? For example, this yeah. is my first time meeting you, right? When I shake my hand or, you know, I just say, hey, so Shazin, what do you do? Ah? So there's always a conversation during a networking session. But the thing is that it just stops there. It doesn't get deeper. So this is where you're going to get a little bit deeper to understand a bit more about what do you do. So to kickstart this session, what do you do, Shazin? What do you do? <laughs> All right. So sure, to be honest with you, yeah. Uh -huh. at uh, events usually when people ask me, so what do you do in my heart and in my mind and what came uh -huh. up? From my mouth will be two different things i'll be like okay. oh my god there's so many <laughs> things i do i don't even know how to put it into words <laughs> so, so that's okay. what i'm usually thinking yeah. so you always start you're but, thinking what should i tell people yeah what should i start with you know mm. so but when it comes to word i educate that's what i do nice yeah so, you, so i always prepare yeah go ahead go ahead so I always prepare those, yeah, from the university, graduate. I'm, I'm, I want to make sure that they are ready for their industrial experience because there's a gap there. Yeah, and my main goal and objective is to narrow that gap. So that's me doing my objective out there. <laughs> it's a very noble act. It's a very, very noble act. It's to narrow that gap. Uh, it's a huge... Uh, opportunity is a huge opportunity right there right uh, so you educate so that is what you describe your profession as that's what you do yes i assist them to help them have a better learning experience so that yes. they get to reskill upskill and cross skill yes wow upskill reskill and cross skill it sounds like you yes. know the, the the phrase right uh to uh, unlearn learn and relearn Right? <laughs> yes, basically that's it. Yes. It's to keep us to keep us afloat, like I might say, right? To keep us very updated with whatever that's happening out there, to make us prepare Correct. for whatever possibility and all that, right? Or yes, the, the adaptable. Yes, that's a word. Right. And that's a word. Or another buzzword that people always talk about is to keep yourself agile. I don't know. I keep yeah. hearing that word like agile, agile, agile. Okay. So uh <laughs> uh so Shazin, yes, you educate maybe just to give a bit more um lime uh to give a bit more um shed some light i want to say limelight to shed a bit more light to the audience as well or listeners as well um who do you educate who are your audience though who do you teach or yeah if you may if you may in terms of age group right. like, do you have to get so specific oh so there's no age group <laughs> yeah basically okay. sometimes there are even industry players who are having problems yeah with regards okay. to their own current profession so uh -huh. those people are welcome to see me, yeah, to contact mm -hmm. me and they will ask me for help. So for example, let's say they want to be promoted, but they're having problems with that. So they can mm -hmm. contact me and ask, so how, how do we do this? Yeah, how do we get there? And then, uh, for example, students, yeah, they are very, very highly educated. Yeah, your CGPA is like 3.8, 3.9, 4 flat. But then they have problems out there in the working world. So how do we settle this issue? Uh, so those are my audience. So those people are the ones that I help. Also those who, let's say, for example, um, they're not good at what they do, but actually we find out that their strengths are actually somewhere else. So that's why they, are, they have been getting uh, not so good results at this particular um, field. Perhaps mm. because they're actually gifted in something else that they haven't even discovered. Uh, so those are what we do. Nice. Um, I think some of your students are tuning in as well. <laughs> but oh, I, I can't actually... Hi. I if, you just, uh, if you just click on your screen, right, there's a comment box uh, on your own screen. Uh, you can see some of the comments. Uh, I, will, I will not pop out some of the comments because some of the comments have some names title to it, uh, brands to it. So uh, to prevent any form of, you know, 
Uh, but I would just um yeah. So there's this comment. Uh, noble profession as an educator, and then uh your yeah Hidayah your student. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome. <laughs> then uh, Gabriel, awesome insights. Yes. Uh oh, Gabriel is from Singapore. Hello, Gabriel. Gabriel. Oh, nice. Hi. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So basically, th that's where you come in to actually to actually um fill up those gaps and to be able to prepare themselves better when they're getting to the workforce itself. And uh, I must say that. I got to agree with uh, Alvin right here when he uh, Alvin mentioned about a noble profession uh, because you are not just preparing them in terms of the academic but it's rather for life if I may say right so that's why there's yeah. that quote saying right um, the the impact of a teacher is not within just within the four walls but actually for the lifetime actually so mm. it is a very very noble act yeah how, how how do you feel how how do you feel about your profession though if you must say if you were to describe how do you feel about your profession how I'm would you honored. Describe? I'm mm -hmm. honored to be a part of the team. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are so many good teachers and educators out there, but mm -hmm. probably just a few random person doing something wrong. I don't believe that people should focus on those. Yeah, nice. but there are so many out there that you can learn from. There are live coaches out there, teachers, incredible teachers, and also professionals who are teachers, yeah, they teach you things, but they are yep. not, um, they don't have the title teacher. Mm. Uh, they are basically like your mentors. Uh, those I consider educators as well. You can learn nice. a lot from them. Yeah. Nice. I I really like that point because, uh, because most often than not, uh, there are a lot of people out there who are actually trying to impart that knowledge, impart that skills or impart inspirations even. Uh, and these are the people actually it's very critical throughout our life, right? It's beyond just someone within the classrooms, for example. And I think the fact that you are going beyond your classroom or your lecture halls to be able to engage people at a larger capacity, like what you are doing right now, I think, um, to be very frank, I think this is something I feel, I personally feel I may be wrong, but I think, um, oh, sorry for that horn, because my house is just nearby the road. Uh, if you heard some car horns earlier on. So, but I think this is something that I feel a lot more educators out there should take that step as well if they can uh, of course if they have the capacity and the bandwidth i may say all right uh, because uh, to really really share that knowledge or to impart that knowledge as well nice um shazwin if you mentioned about it's a very noble and something that you are very honored to do and i'm pretty sure uh it is something that you it, it's close to your heart lah, you know it's about engaging humans mind and the heart i'm just curious over the years that you have been doing this as a coach, educator, as a trainer, as a facilitator, if I may use that word, right? As a facilitator, yeah. what were some of the misconceptions that you have gotten or stereotypes that you have gotten before over the years being an educator? So, okay, over the years, one of the misconceptions is that you just follow the curriculum and then that's it, your job is done. Yay, I'm done for today. I can go home and just rest now. Uh -huh. so that's a really really strong misconception especially during this odl session yeah i think it's 24 7. you are so with your ODL? students yeah pardon what's, what's odl odl oh, sorry right? online distance learning oh okay online distance learning yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah so you're basically online together with your students yeah mm. So of course it's understood that students are to contact you during working hours but sometimes that's not what they are capable to do you know because let's say for example you have internet connection problems the only mm. time you're available to contact your teachers are when everybody is sleeping so that's when you contact your teachers so you ask them questions so your teacher will probably answer at another time but those are what we call a 24-hour task <laughs> well you know you you're always with the phone sometimes you get worried or concerned about certain things yeah it's it's crazy <laughs> and that goes beyond your so-called work hours right because yes. i wanted to i wanted to actually ask because i have a list of myth about educators and teachers and i wanted you to ah. actually see whether you can what are your thoughts or what are your reaction to this myth all right, since you mentioned about this 24 hours thing, uh, before we continue, I'm just going to throw out about two to three myths. I want to see what's your reaction and what are your thoughts about it, okay? This is okay, not prepared, right? this is not prepared, right? Okay? okay? So, the very first myth is this, which I think you kind of answered. Teachers, they only work eight to three and off on the weekend. 
<laughs> what are your thoughts okay. about this? No curriculum for you. We are not going to do anything on Saturday and Sunday. Let's sleep all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy, That's crazy. right? You you wanna elaborate more about that point? Uh, what are, maybe if you wanna debunk that myth, what would how, what would be your reaction to that be? What would you say right, to that so myth? In, in order for us to prepare graduates for the working world, right? They're not just supposed to be strong physically, but they need mm-hmm. to be strong mentally as well. So you have to prepare them mentally, and sometimes this is not included in their curriculum. So you have to do it like in between lessons. You have to do extra classes, like just thirty minutes during the weekends, for them to open up their mind and think about other possibilities out there. All right. So this takes time. Mental True. preparation is not just a, an overnight session where you tomorrow you wake up. Okay, I'm ready to become an engineer now. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know. True. Yes. So There's a lot of. Definitely. A there's, there's, right so there's definitely a lot of preparation time that happens behind the scene i can totally resonate with you uh i mean as a learning and development practitioner myself a lot of people see us as oh your job's easy lah you know you just go out there talk 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 talk, talk, talk then after that you're done <laughs> but when we are sitting down when we are sitting down behind our laptop or desktop right people are thinking eh, since you are not talking which means you are free right meaning you got nothing to do right then i can give you more class <laughs> lah, right but you forgot that Right, then they, they forget that <laughs> hey, before I enter that classroom or the training room or a virtual room, the amount of preparation that happens behind the, when we talk about learning pedagogy, how do you design a program, how do you ensure that your students have a pre-learning materials, have a post-learning materials, where does this come from? Right, people always forget about that. So yes. for those of you who are thinking, especially if you are her student, if you are thinking that she's free after coming to your classroom, <laughs> please bear in mind, ah, huh? alright, she's not, ah. Huh? <laughs> so please. Please give more love because really, uh, I'm saying this from, I'm not a teacher, but I think I'm, as a student myself, as a learning by practitioner myself, I think we should give more love for educators, really, really. I think we should really, really give more love to educators because we feel that educators, uh, naturally when they come in, we assume that they are like a super women, wonder women. They got no baggage with them. They come in, they are more than prepared to change what your life is. But trust me, when they come into a room, they are putting aside all that to give that fullest attention so that you can benefit out of the whatever that they can give you. So, please, I would like to encourage everyone out there, if you still, you are, whether you're a student, you have a teacher or a trainer, please recognize their effort, appreciate every single thing that they do because they are going beyond their work hours, they are going beyond their salary, if I may say. I know it's a bit sensitive, but it's the reality of things out there, all right, to make things work for you. Uh, that brings me to my next point. I'm not sure whether you're going to answer me this question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should appreciate um, I'm not sure you're going to answer this question. You can choose to just brush it off. But one of the myths <laughs> is that teachers are overpaid. Whoa! <laughs> Where is that? In what country? I have In no what idea. Planet. Uh, but this is one of the myths I've been seeing online. You know, teachers are overpaid because I think they count based on the salary and then they count based uh-huh. on the number of hours they spend teaching. Ooh. Teaching only. So I think based on yeah. the number of, so basically assuming like you go to a classroom, you teach for maybe about three, four hours and then you no longer teach, mm-hmm. supposedly, and then you go back to your staff room and all that. That's why people are saying that, oh, teachers are overpaid. Okay, I will <laughs> definitely talk about it. <laughs> I totally don't agree because okay. Okay, teachers are also counsellors. Teachers are also mm. motivators, yeah, we educate and we have to know a lot of things, you know, because, for example, our mission is to send out awareness. But if we don't have awareness ourselves, how mm-hmm. are we supposed to impart that to our students? Exactly. So sometimes we have to add on new knowledge as well as an educator. Yeah, because we don't know everything, you know, we're not Mr. Know-it-all like, oh, Shazin, do you know blah, blah, blah? No. We are also learners. That's why lifelong learner is like my full time yes. mission. It's like, yeah. So I, I think, yeah. Go ahead, definitely go ahead, go ahead. not. One okay. thing about education field I know is that it's very safe. It's definitely secure. It's not mm-hmm. going to be uh, very up there or it's not going to be bottom shelf. 
but mm. overpaid nah okay i hear you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry uh i hear that the same sentiment coming from a lot of teachers even in singapore as well it's like yeah um uh, you know the amount of time that you spend and not only that i think that goes back to the next part i want to ask about there are no out of pocket expenses out of po- oh <laughs> Because I realize this is usually, this is really the thing that teachers like the sentiments or the 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 final no not final the the concerns or the sadness that the teachers have I won't say sadness sorry the the sacrifices that the teacher actually do but people don't realize um, when they come into a classroom let's say they were to give you certain materials they print out certain things they give you certain gifts most often and not this comes from their own pocket money actually yes true right indeed. the tools that they use. The tools that yeah. they use and all that, color pencils, from, markers, right? yes, and, and then these books. are coming from their pocket money. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Example, even like yourself, I'm pretty sure you actually give certain materials. You actually buy certain materials just so that your students are able to benefit out of this. So yeah, yeah. talking about that, you should check yeah. out my Instagram account. I'm currently doing a book contest. I'm giving out storybooks. What's your Instagram handle? Read. Shazin Sazali, my name under my name at Shazin Sazali. Okay, Vera. Yeah, Very so cool. I'm giving out books for free. I want to uh, promote reading. Nice. Is this is it your Instagram handle? Everyone out there. But then is, is this is your is this your Instagram handle on the screen? Yes, correct. Okay, so there's a contest that you're to encourage people to read, and you're giving away what? Yeah. You're giving away books books for free with oh. postage yes can you do you send it to singapore as well yeah <laughs> if you join in the contest <laughs> I, i will check it out i'll check it out i'll check it out <laughs> <laughs> but this contest is only available on uh, instagram is it yes at correct at the nice, moment nice, nice. Yes. cool 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 so please go and check it out uh whether you are on uh, linkedin or facebook or youtube go check out that the instagram handle is there shazun sazali Uh, again, these are the sacrifices that teachers do because going back to your mission and your principle is that it's a lifelong learning. Learning doesn't stop the moment that you get your certificates. Cool. It's in fact yeah. that's where your learning continues as well, right? Yes, correct. <sighs> wow. Um, perhaps maybe before I continue, I'm just going to ask you one last myth. All right. <laughs> again, going I'm back excited. to the profession. Going back yeah. to the profession. Teachers are born; they are not made. Ooh. What are your thoughts about this? She's a born, huh? I reckon, right? When you were born, what do you know? How, what? How do you know how to read? How do you know how to crawl? You, you <laughs> sometimes it's self learned, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think the very least, and it's actually the most um challenging process you have to self learn something and in order for you to self learn and continue doing that you have to prepare yourself with that mental readiness that mm. you you have to be motivated to learn on your own you have to look up to somebody you have mm-hmm. to have mentors you have to uh take example from different people and see what they are good at So I definitely don't think that they're born just like whoa. Okay, today I think because honestly, to tell you, mm-hmm. um, this is a secret. Okay, but okay, so now it's not going to be a secret. <laughs> my mother, <laughs> my mother, she was a teacher. I mean, yeah, she's retired now. So wow. looking at her, yeah, uh-huh. looking at her, I decided in during my high school times, I'm never, ever, ever going to be a teacher. <laughs> yeah, I said okay. You know what? And the reason? I'm never going because she's so busy all the time, mm. marking books, doing administrative tasks, and then students will be having discipline issues, and then they will have um, extra meetings with her. You know, students sometimes puncture her tires. You know, oh, those dear. are like behind the scenes that yep, people yep, don't yep. know. Like, yeah, let's say you fail your student. Oh yeah. Ah, you you might never know what will happen. True. Ah, so I said to myself, I'm never ever going to be a an any sort of educator. You know, like <laughs> never. <laughs> ah, And here you are. Ta-da! And here you are. 
Yes. You know, in fact, even your students are. I think some it's like Shazin. Oh, even some some comments are coming in. Shazin is an awesome educator. Um, and then wait, I think I saw someone else was like, uh, wait, where was it? Where was it? Uh, are you? Uh, virtual heart, madam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, virtual heart, virtual heart. You know. Uh, then somebody was saying about uh, where was it? Okay, never mind. Yeah, but yeah, clearly, you know, I think clearly the fact that your students are, you know coming forward to actually engage you even beyond the classroom, I think that explains a lot about your value that you deliver as an educator, really. I think that's a good testament of uh, yourself as an educator. So really hats off to you. Kudos to you. Um, not every educator out there is able to reach this level uh, in terms of uh, not just about grades, but to instill that human side of the person. And I think that's something yes. that we are needing, I would say. That's something that we are needing. Yeah. So that's why I would like to focus more on life because I want to be an educator who is the opposite of all of those educators that I don't want to be. You know, when I met mm. some of those, yeah, and then I met great ones. I want to be like those great ones. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your inspiration, right? Yes, correct. And I, I think as, as I'm talking to people like yourself, I talked to Meeping yesterday, I'm going to talk about, uh, talk to Zoo Angelica tomorrow. A lot of these people, to be honest, um, your, you, your, all of you are actually giving a lot of inspiration, not only to those of you who are listening, but to be very frank and honest, the reason why I actually decided to reach out to all of you because um, there are small little things that you guys are doing that I, I personally am inspired by. And that's exactly why I wanted to bring you all on this live session as well. And um it's also to celebrate again you talk about the international women's day um it's not just about a day but it's a month or in fact to be very honest i think i saw this quote right um international women's day is not about celebrating women just on that particular day it's actually to reinforce the need for us to acknowledge the effort the work the 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 kind of uh, sacrifices that all of you are doing and um as educators i believe personally your impact is for a lifetime. It's not beyond, it's not just within the classroom or not just after your student graduate. So really, really, I think uh, I personally would say that um, good job on that, really. Uh, even some people are saying that, oh, teachers work is stressful. I believe they are seriously underpaid. Uh, I think <laughs> it's a world problem right there. It's a world problem. Yes. So people are saying that if you go to a surgeon or a doctor to solve yeah. your medical issues, and they can be paid thousands of dollars, big money. Why are we paying teachers who prepare you to be a surgeon? Why are we preparing, paying people who are preparing them to be a lawyer much lesser than what the career is? <laughs> right? So I think, <laughs> I really think about time that people should really look deeper or perhaps uh, we should really, I mean, but if, you know, that whole circle of uh, control, what is not within your control and all that, right? If, yeah. We cannot control certain things. I think for us as the consumers, as students, then we should acknowledge, celebrate this a little bit more so that the teachers, educators, they feel a bit more appreciated as well. So take note of that, whoever is listening. Uh, there's uh, some questions. Yeah, there's some questions uh, okay. right here. If we will take some questions from the listeners or the audience. Cindy. Okay. Cindy is very nice. Uh, you know, uh, Good morning, Shazwin and Shukri. Uh, virtual hub. Uh, how do you discover that being educated, it's your passion or it's your calling? Wow. I love this. Ooh, this is deep, man. Yeah, go ahead. While you are talking, I'm going to take a bite on my Kinder Bueno. So don't mind me. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so honestly, Cindy, uh, there are times, yeah, when I feel like, oh, okay, this is my calling. This is my calling. And then before this, previously, I thought that perhaps the industry doesn't like me. Yeah, I love the industry, but the industry doesn't love me. So why? So because I... Uh, there was this time whereby I was promoted, yeah, as a uh, a very like a language principal at, at, at an institution, but then I couldn't proceed because of a certain illness I have. So I was thinking, oh, I want to do so much for uh, others, yeah, but I can't do it in energy wise. So I would love to do it in other version wise you see so sometimes i do feel that the field doesn't like me but when you know it's your calling and you're most passionate about that then that is your calling girl that's how i found out that being an educator is my passion it gives you that extra power extra lifting uh like 
excitement it gives you that extra energy even though when you're tired of course you get tired at the end of the day but you're still excited like pump up somehow so that's, that's how i know yeah and that's where your and that's basically where your energy comes from as well it's actually from the students that is you are facing isn't it exactly yeah it's yeah, like yeah. a two way thing yeah of course i totally agree so Yeah, so Cindy, that's a very, very, very powerful question because most often they're not people who have their stories to how they actually stumble upon this career, and um, some people might say being an educator is like a what they call it, a iron rice bowl, right? Uh, cannot like what you mentioned just now, you cannot go wrong. Well, I mean that's that's the reality. Uh, let's not shy away from that because at the end of the day, people work for the money. Let's face it, people work for the money. Let's not deny yeah. it. But I think beyond the money, like what Shazwin just uh, uh, highlighted uh, uh, here. Uh, I'm hearing what you're saying that the passion was really, it's. It keeps well, you, you, extra, you like. Right, and I think. Motivates you to go further. Exactly true. Makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. And to answer Sydney's question, basically you were you were not exactly looking for it, because you rightly mentioned at the start, right? Hey, you because seeing of seeing how your your mom were and all that, you would not aspire to be a teacher yeah. because of the amount of workload. Yeah, I was in the corporate world. <laughs> <laughs> and and then things just came and then things just fall in nicely and here we are all right and the amount of impact of the students the hundreds or even thousands of students that you've been impacting over the years i think that's really really amazing i well. mean thank god yay yeah and i'm pretty sure and uh i'm not trying to be religious right here but i think one of the belief system that both of us have is that um the career as an educator or trainer or as someone that teaches right Uh, is at the end of the day the, when you can actually teach something and this knowledge continuously being spread that's a blessing throughout your entire life even after you are you are no longer around because yes. you know people are always sharing this knowledge and exactly right it's a noble going back to the what someone mentioned at the start it's a really a noble career all right so if you're an educator whether you are uh, like what shazwin mentioned whether you have that title a teacher or not but you know you are enriching someone's life you are educating someone continue doing that because you know why you never know that the impact is a lifetime the impact is bound there's no boundaries the impact is really it's crazy it's boundary there's no boundary at all i, I, I was trying to find the correct <laughs> word but yeah, yeah there's no boundaries at all yeah um there's another question um by alvin how do you connect with your students oh engagement engagement is very important mm. So how do you connect? So I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I will always try to make it relatable with them. Yeah, mm-hmm. depending on the issue or topic we are discussing. So let's say, for example, today our topic is fear and anxiety of public speaking. So mm-hmm. I will try to connect with them. Like, what are their main concerns? Why are they afraid to talk in public? I see. Have they had any bad experience? Blah blah. blah. How to overcome those? Da, 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 da. So those are ways. Um, how i can connect with my students better mm. yeah relate to their issues and sometimes share my own experience because yeah like i said we're we're not born uh, an expert in our field like i wasn't born and then suddenly i can speak in public yeah so it was <laughs> like <laughs> to practice so True. i did stumble and stutter along the way so i will share those experience with them on what happened <laughs> So there's a lot of uh, the personal touch to it, and I'm gonna be very honest. As a student myself, I think those teachers that share a lot of their personal journey it has more impact in my life. To be honest, uh, I still remember oh. teachers. They don't. Some of them don't even teach me certain subjects. They are just probably my extra CCA teachers in Singapore. We call it co-curricular activities, extra CCA. Um, they are just my CCA teachers, but they are one of the most impactful ones. They don't teach me certain subjects, but the amount of sharing and like what you mentioned, the amount of sharing they have. Um, is the one that really impacted my life, to be honest, until today. And whenever I have certain stories and all that, I will always love to share about what they do and all that. They really go beyond what they do. And if I may share, which I believe this is something that you would agree with me, I'm de- depends from a educator perspective. I was I wasn't the brightest of all students, really. Um, to be very frank and honest, nothing to hide. Um, in Singapore, we sit for O levels, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone also sit for O levels, GCO levels, and uh, the grades for O levels is that. The smaller your grades, the number, the total, the total numbers for them who are not aware, the better your result is. So the bigger the number, mm. the worse your result is. The worse your result is. 
so how the benchmarking is that um if you're going to enter junior college and all that your grade should be below 10 anything ah, below 10 I you see. can enter junior college but anything slightly above that and all that probably you go to polytechnic but again it depends on the causes that you can enter i wasn't the brightest of all student i'm going to be very upfront my grade was 32 points uh. i was a 32 pointer student <laughs> all right so um but one of the things that um, you talk about 32, right? So in Singapore, you have junior college, you have polytechnic, you have ITE, more of a technical kind of school. I was only entitled to go to two courses in ITE, only two courses, which means my grade was really not the best of all people, right? Not the best of all people. And I still remember what one of my teachers said this. Uh, she wasn't my, she wasn't my, um, my teacher teaching me any subject, but she actually taught, she told me this, Shukri, don't worry. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You know, until today, I still remember what she said. She said that, trust me, even as a teacher, she said, even as a teacher, I'm going to tell you this, but please don't tell anyone. She said this. Please don't tell me anyone, right? I'm just going to tell you this. Grades is just going to be a certificate that will lend you to the course that you want to go. But after your polytechnic, after your degree, that's more important. And that's exactly what life is all about. So she said, go, explore what the world has to offer. But I, yet, I have my, I have my um, uh, form teacher, when she passed me the result, and this is what she said, I was like, oh, I really literally <laughs> rolled my eyes. She said this, uh, so Shukri, you know your results, right? And I'm like, uh, okay. Then she just passed me the result, and then she's like, yeah, just sign off, and then go off. Huh? That's it. No encouragement, no nothing. Then I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, so um, I'm pretty sure if you are a Shah student, Shazwin student, I'm pretty sure, trust me, hearing what, from what she said, shared, whatever that she has to share with you in your class, trust me, please take it very, very seriously because she is preparing you for what the world has to offer because not every teacher come in with a heart. Really, not every teacher come in with a heart. As, that's a hard truth of things. Lah, right? Wow. You know, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit emotional when it comes to this kind of thing because uh, whoever that's sharing this, they are very, very um, uh, inspirational people. Okay, Shah, um, next question that I have here with me from Alvin again. Uh, you are here with me, right? Yes, but okay. I'm also emotional because I remember one teacher saying to me, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm. <laughs> so how do you answer that? This way, what are you going to be? Oh, that scarred me for life. Eh? <laughs> That's a... Uh... I still remember, like, I mean, there are some of them even when, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, they'll be like, uh, oh, you want to, if you're not going to study hard, you're going to become like this person. I'm like, yeah. huh? <laughs> yes. And I'm like, you don't say this so kind of thing. So that's why I said, don't focus on those, focus on those brilliant ones that you look up to. All right? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Um. Alvin, right here, has another question, but it's a bit more about really about your profession itself. Itself, um, how's your journey in online teaching? And this is something I'm pretty sure there might be some teachers listening in to this, educators or trainers listening in to this as well. How do you shift it from a face to face to online, and what were some of your struggle? Let's be honest. Yeah, how was it like for you transiting? All right, so let's be honest. There are pros and cons. Yeah, there are good things as well as bad things. So the good mm -hmm. things are, of course, you get to run in your own house. Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. you get to go to your own toilet. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> and then you get to have a quick bite. Yeah, and then yeah, those are the pros. Yeah, the advantages of online teaching and the uh, what do we call these advantages are of course engagement with students. Yeah. Mm. When you love to see your students face to face, you get this aura, you know, you can feel their vibes, you know, when they don't feel uplifted or they, if you send some uh, students are feeling demotivated, you can lift those people up. But when they are online, it's a bit mm -hmm. harder for you, yeah, because you can't study their nonverbal uh, communication, yeah, yep. elements, the aspects of it. So it's a it's a very tough aspect for me in order to keep everyone uh, grounded. Mm. Yeah, when it comes to online teaching, so there will be some who are probably um, th those outliers. Yeah, 
we call mm. them um, probably that we tried help because I tried helping some students are probably having a very difficult time, especially yeah. mentally. Yeah, so we will give them like personal talks. Okay, like, okay, you're going to be just fine. It might be a little bit tough, but so you got to give them that pep talk, you know, to I boost see. them. So there will be an increase in performance, but yeah. you still note that if this is continuously happening for a long time, that student might have some difficulty. I'm sure. Yeah, because, you know, when, when it was our time, university life is all about us meeting our friends, you know, learning together, that kind of thing, right? That's the mm. best thing about university life. Mm. You walk together and then you play in the rain yeah. or you just yeah. run <laughs> away from the rain, you know, that kind of thing. So this time around, it's different. Online learning and online teaching is so different. So I think those are the challenges as well as the pros of online teaching. Yeah. Nice. But do you, do you see... Um from your experience uh, dealing with both right uh, face to face or in person training uh, teaching versus uh, online teaching um i'm i'm hearing you i foresee that you are enjoying a little bit more on the face to face teaching i believe so because of the yeah. human connection yeah but do you do you see the trend of uh, educational institutions schools and all that it will become a norm where it be a both blended or both very strongly i, I know all these people are talking about online i mean blended learning and all that but do you see that uh, the whole blending will be very more, uh, very, very much more uh, distinct and significant in the time to come? Do you see that people eventually say, oh, I'm not going to do online teaching anymore. I'm just going to focus on face-to-face -face when COVID stops. Or you think that curriculum will eventually be like, oh, maybe 60% classroom, 40% virtual eventually. Do you see that ah, happening? I'm actually a strong advocate of it should be both. Mm. Not to not to make it difficult, but to to facilitate them in order to prepare them for the working world. Because sometimes it can be remote learning. Yeah, sometimes yep. you can be in Singapore and you are working for a Malaysian company. Mm. Sometimes you can be in Malaysia working for a Singaporean company or across the world. You know, it, it's remote. Mm. Yeah, and it's going to be a global uh, industry. Right, you can be like working though uh, with those from China, yeah, Europe. You you know, you might never know. It's going yep. to be really big, yeah, in that sense. So in assisting and facilitating them to be more open to that kind of environment, they should mm -hmm. definitely uh, be uh, what do we call that um, familiarized to familiarize mm. them with the whole. Yeah, online and also face to face, so that they can do both and be good at it. Nice. Yeah, makes sense to really yeah. open up their lenses and beyond, um, just within the 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 four walls, yeah. uh, right? No limitation. Yes. Oh yes, that's very very true. Uh, learning has no limits, lah. Literally, you can learn from every angle. And uh, mm -hmm. Gabriel right here commented, uh, I rap, sing, dance, and quote on TikTok. Oh, I show students a unique side <laughs> of me. Uh wow, make lessons an unforgettable experience. Oh, wow, this one really um uh wow. putting himself yeah very interesting, very interesting because um it is okay, giving I a different follow him. Uh yeah, yeah, totally, is totally. On in, on LinkedIn, is it yeah on LinkedIn? Uh LinkedIn, yeah, Gabriel, yeah, you should get care. Maybe Gabriel, if you are tuning in right now, you can just uh link up with Shazwin, no, no, Shazwin can just connect with you after that. Um this is very interesting because I think this is also bringing a different vibe or different experience to what being an educator is. Because I'm pretty sure last time, right, it's like being a teacher, it's like, oh, you need to be very prom and proper. You cannot exchange contacts with the students. <laughs> students cannot know your social life. But right now, it's like, I need to put myself out there. People need to know what I'm doing so that we can connect better. You know, it's yeah. very different. It's a different landscape entirely as well. Gabriel, thank you so much for sharing your um, experience and your thoughts as well. Really, really appreciate it. Elvin, uh, thank you, Shazwin. Thank you, nice, Alvin. Nice. nice. Okay. Cindy right here. Wow. Inspiring, Shazwin. Full respect for you as a passion educator at heart. I'm sure you have touched many lives positively, big or small. Keep going and cheers with a hardship right there. I'm pretty sure. I'm very, very certain of that. I'm very, very certain of that. So that brings me to my next very timely topic uh, question, which is very nice. Uh, like what? I mean, Cindy already highlighted. What are some of your great takeaways or your satisfaction from your profession. I think, I'm not sure that we talk about this. Uh, maybe you did mention no. about it earlier on. 
Yeah. What are some of your yeah, great takeaways or satisfaction from your profession? Okay, so let's say for example, yeah, uh, oh. a student is failing. So they can't even, they're not even interested. They can't even, they couldn't even be bothered. Like, what is mm -hmm. this subject I need to take? It's not even my core course. And then they don't see the relevance in learning that particular subject of mine. Okay. Mm. So at the end of the day, when they finally see and they finally get to apply all those in their lives as well as their other lessons, I feel like a sense of accomplishment whereby my student, especially those who can't even see the relevance, why are we learning this? Mm. For God's sake. So, yeah. and then they, they come to me and they will say, thank you so much, madam. I feel like you uh, helped me a lot in my uh, journey mm. of making it more easy and fun, blah, blah, blah. I feel like I've lifted some kind of burden, you know? And mm. that way, even my wings are a little bit flying. <laughs> if you get what I mean. Yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> so... That that will be your that will be your satisfaction when the students actually come to you and say that hey you know what uh, I thank you because of you I'm able to do this or because of you I'm able to see this and yeah. that that kind of realize that hey you know what I have managed to touch that single bit of uh, the life of others as well right yes correct right. and when I see things are happening and people are aware of certain things that they haven't before I think I've accomplished some things yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Um, oh, there you go. Uh, Cindy actually has a question, uh, which also ties in very, very nicely. Uh, Cindy, last question for Sergeant. No, Cindy, don't worry. Please go and f go and uh, ask any <laughs> questions. You know, I always say, right, it's not easy to get all these professionals, you know. So when I'm able to get them, right, uh, and uh, usually if I'm going to get them to do a conduct a session, it's going to be very expensive. So, but, you know, they're willingly doing this together with me. So please ask questions. <laughs> last questions. <laughs> What's the most fulfilling thing about being an educator? Uh, thanks to Shukri for facilitating this content and value to others around you. No, no worries. Really, really. I'm actually trying to really... Uh, I think it's to make individuals like Shazwin and a lot of people out there to be heard as well because there's a lot of profession that is... In a way, only certain people are being heard. But I think there's a lot more people are doing all the quiet work out there, impacting life, whichever profession. But it's just weird. We do not know they, they are around. So I'm hoping that this can be the channel. So... Cindy's question for Shazwin. No worries. I don't think there's a last question. So, Cindy, please feel free to ask. What's the most fulfilling thing about being an educator? Probably you answered. Maybe you want to share a bit more? Uh, Shazwin? The most fulfilling thing is when you yourself get inspired from others because you are always meeting yes. people, right? Yeah. So, everyone has got something to offer. So, even when I'm meeting Shuk today, he, he will talk, uh, teach me a few things, you know? anybody out there when i just teach them something or i share something with them they always have something to offer so it's like a win-win situation i think that's the most fulfilling thing about being an educator you always get something in return it's like yay and it's yeah true 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 true, true. and you never know it comes in all directions as well right and it's like hey, yeah. oh yeah and then, then you sit down and you realize and yeah i see the impact it's actually interesting because you're meeting people you're talking to people and that's where really that keeps you going. I'm pretty sure there were days. There were, I'm pretty sure, maybe just curious, uh, if you don't mind, what were some of your down days, if you don't mind sharing as an educator? Downtime or, Let's you know? say, for example, yeah, I told you I was uh, being promoted, yeah, as a mm. principal of a uh, an institution, of a language institution. Yeah. But I couldn't make it because of some health issues and health conditions. So those mm. are my downtime. Yeah, so I will feel like, oh no, have I failed in this particular industry or something like that? So I need to make mm -hmm. sure that I do what I love and mm -hmm. that will keep me happy. Yeah. Nice. And nice. And key, right? Yeah, of course. Agree. Totally, totally. And got to believe in that as well, right? And uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's really, really very nice. Because things are all planned. There are certain reasons why certain things are happening anyway, right? So... All right, uh, a bit mindful of time right here. As you all know, as I always say, whenever I'm doing my live session and all that or having this conversation, I can continue dragging the conversation if I want to. Uh, but I think I'm just a bit <laughs> mindful of time. I'm a bit mindful of time um, because I don't want to, you, know, uh, you know, people are sitting like watching us for the next two, three hours. Uh, but of course, if there's opportunity, I would love to bring Shazwin back again. We can talk about something else a little bit, maybe about Yay. your subject matter expert. 
a bit more about your subject matter expert the next time. Or maybe in the month of September. September is a teacher's day, right? I think. Is it teacher's day or September? I can't remember. I think there's a, there's a teacher's day. Lah. So I'm just thinking maybe teachers I should do like a series of conversation with different teachers. But okay, never mind. We'll keep that to later. We'll keep that to later. Uh, <laughs> you see all these ideas. Um, so in. I... Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. You know, like what you mentioned, all the inspiration. So um, I'm left with two more... Um, I have two more questions for you. And uh, I'm just going to share with you your last... I will have this one last question. But uh, last, last question. But we keep this at the end. Uh, but just something for you to think about what might be your uh, response to this. The last question is basically your golden ticket advice for our friends out there who want to explore being an educator, a teacher. What would be your advice? But we'll keep that to the end. We'll keep that to the end, all right? Uh, but before we actually get to the last question, what? how would you describe your profession in just one sentence? You probably shared about this at the start. All right. Mm -hmm. What would be that one sentence and how do you describe your profession in just one sentence? Okay. So in one sentence, I would describe my profession as facilitating and assisting yeah, my clients and my learners, my fellow learners in order for them to ease their learning journey by boosting their confidence and self-esteem. So that they can reskill, upskill, and cross skill. <laughs> wow, that's your tagline, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice one. That's a nice one. So nicely put, nicely put. And uh, I'm hearing a lot of the touch, human touch to it, and that's really, really amazing. So that brings me to my very last question for you. And for those of you tuning in, whichever platform, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. I forget which platform lah, but yeah, uh, and eventually it will be on uh, Spotify as well. Um, before I actually bring, bring you guys to the, the very last question, which is a golden ticket advice. Um, if you have not checked out, uh, Shazwin's both Instagram as well as, uh, what do you call that? Uh, LinkedIn, please go and connect with Shazwin because she has some giveaway. She has some giveaway for the book on, uh, right on her Instagram, or you can just link up, uh, on LinkedIn. I'm pretty sure she's more than happy to have a conversation with you. All right. Uh, but before I go to that point, ah, I'm love, I would love to take this question. No worries, Cindy. Cindy, I have one last question before I go to my one part. I'm curious, why make you pick English as your main subject to teach? Ah. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one, because it's global. Yeah. Hmm. And two, because it's our second language here in Malaysia. Yeah. So uh, I find it that uh, there are... Um, um, a big audience yeah in malaysia who is very interested in the subject but a little bit challenging it, they find it a little bit challenging for them so i would love to ease that process for them by telling them a few tips and tricks on how to make life easier when it comes to english nice 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 yeah so there you go city you got your response uh, so she basically identified the gap. Lah. She identified the opportunity gap right there. And that's why she was like, oh, I should get in there. I should get in there. <laughs> so, so Shazwin, I'm going to bring you to the very last question, which is a golden ticket advice. And how we're going to do this is very simple. I'll be playing a short clip, which is about a five-second short clip, which is a uh, curtain opening, right? Uh, for you know, just suspense, just a suspense thing, right? Um, and after that, golden ticket advice, a uh, short five-seconds video. It's for you to actually share with all of us. What would be your golden ticket advice for our friends out there who want to be a, an educator, who want to be a teacher, or want to be in this field of yours, all right? So up to you how long you're going to talk, all right? But if, let's say, you're going to take about an hour, I'll probably just excuse myself and then I'm just going to let you talk for the next one hour. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding, all right? So um, to everyone, I'm going to leave Shazwin, all right, uh, for her to share with us what's the golden ticket advice. All right, hello. So back with me, yeah? So when you want to be an educator, yeah? So our main task is to inspire and to motivate. So when we have to do just that, we ourselves have to feel our needs of being confident and possess high self-esteem. So how do we do that? So in order for us to have, uh, to have high uh, confidence and self-esteem is that we need to make sure that we keep our promises that we make to ourselves first. 
So don't forget to make sure you check, okay, and tick all those boxes that you make for yourself. So don't break your own promises. That will bring you down. So that's one of the reasons why you have low self-esteem or low confidence because you are not doing what you promised to do to yourself, okay? So that's the main golden ticket for today. <laughs> okay, sure, we're done. Sure, we can't hear you. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was muted. Yeah. I was muted. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I was saying uh, nicely put right there um, is to keep to your promises and what you plan to yes. do and to stick through it as well because um, and I think that's when I think whether your students or your participants are able to actually resonate and hear you as well, right? Um, yeah. So Shazwin, once again, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation about what do you do. Thank you so much for being very, very selfless in giving and sharing. Um, My pleasure. I had, Really, really. I think it's been an amazing conversation for the past an hour or so. And I'm pretty sure a lot of our friends out there, whether they are watching this right now live or whether they're going to be uh, listening in after the session itself through the podcast or even after the session itself, I'm pretty sure they will benefit a lot from you. And personally for myself, if there's one takeaway that I actually learned a lot from you or inspired from you is that um, to really, really bring that human touch to your profession. And that's what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing from you. Uh, from the words that you are saying, from the experience that you are sharing, it's like it can be teaching any form of subject, any form of topic, any form of conversation, any kind of career, but bring that human touch to whatever that you do because when you are doing that, people can feel you, people can resonate with you, people will be inspired by you as well. So, Shazwin, thank you once again. Appreciate thank your time. You. Pleasure. Pleasure for, pleasure is mine. All right. Um, I will be taking you off the screen for a while. Please don't leave. All right. Uh, don't leave off. I, I, will have, I will catch up with you just in a bit after I finish my uh, wrap up. Okay. I need to do wrapping up a little bit. Um, so, Shazwin, thank you so much. For those of you who have not linked up with Shazwin, please go and link up with Shazwin over on her LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, if you are on Instagram or on Facebook, I'm pretty sure you can just check out her Instagram and Facebook. Uh, sorry, Instagram and LinkedIn as well. Or she's giving away free books giveaway. She will ship it to you. All right, I'm going to check out her Instagram later after this. All right, uh, Shazwin Sazali. All right, um, otherwise, Shazwin, thank you. I'll see you after this. Right, stay there. Stay there, all right? Stay behind the backstage. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, once again, thank you so much for those of you who tune in, uh, whichever platform. Um, really, really appreciate all your time. Really appreciate for you waking up early in the morning, whether you're having your breakfast, whether you're in bed. It's been a great one hour. I've been very much inspired because even as a trainer myself, as an educator myself, there's a lot of things that we are learning. There's no such thing as we are at a peak where we know everything. All right, we are always, always learning. Um, and I think what's most important is for us to have this kind of conversation because when we are having this conversation, that's when we actually realize that, hey, you know what? These people know this kind of information. These people know this knowledge. And that's where you grow your network. You grow your learning capabilities as well. All right. Uh, and what like Shazwin mentioned, the world is so huge and so big out there. Go ahead spread your wings and learn from what other has to offer as well all right so with that said thank you once again for joining me in what do you do there will be another live session coming up tomorrow uh that will be the summary that, that will sum up my three days straight of doing live session all right uh as part of the international women's day uh celebration as well all right i have three amazing ladies all right so tomorrow i'll be having uh, an image branding coach all right um with me all right uh so she will be sharing more about what this image branding coach is all about is it someone that teach you how to dress properly put on a makeup properly do a hair properly or is it just putting a nice photo on your linkedin or what all right so she'll be sharing more tomorrow okay um so if there's anything if there's any questions feel free to reach out if you have any if individual that you think that hey sure you might want to have a conversation with this individual because the career is quite interesting just drop me a message. I'll be more than happy to have the conversation with them. All right. So that's it from myself, Shukri. I thank you once again. Please stay safe. Please wear your mask wherever that you go. And what's most important is let's do our part to fight COVID together. All right. Uh, because we are nowhere near. All right. We are all doing we are all doing this together as well. All right. So please stay safe, and I shall see you guys again in the next live. And remember, whatever that you are doing, spread your story, share your stories because people will be inspired by what you have to share as well. All right. So with that said, take care and I'll see you guys again. Goodbye.